So as business leaders, what we can do together to build coalitions between our countries and, and build on mutual interests is absolutely critical to our future. Um, Tishman Spire has been active in China since 2005. We have scaled our business fairly rapidly there. We have a development pipeline of over 15 million square feet of property. We just broke ground on the largest real estate project uh, ever undertaken in Shanghai. We're active in Chengdu, in Tianjin, in Beijing, and we are exploring uh, expansion into several other cities as well. Um, I Usually when I talk to U.S. audiences about real estate, I'm asked to speak about what it's like to do business in China. When I got called to speak today, it was to talk to a Chinese audience about investing in the U.S., which I'm happy to do. It's a little bit less exciting uh, and less path-breaking than what we're doing in China, but it's interesting and, and most importantly, you can certainly have commercial success investing here in the U.S. I want to talk a little bit about it. The dynamic for real, commercial real estate investing in the U.S. is, I would argue, almost the inverse of the dynamic of investing in China. In China, there is this enormous demand for high-quality real estate. And at the same time, there is a very good ability to generate new supply, to create new office buildings to satisfy that demand. So you have a robust demand side as well as a robust supply side. In the United States, particularly on the office side of the equation, and that's where we focus our activities here in the U.S. in office buildings, it's nearly the opposite. You have very, very tepid demand for real estate, but at the same time, particularly in major cities like New York, it is almost impossible to build new buildings. So real estate investing activity here focuses much more on investing and on acquisitions than on development. I want to talk a little bit about that. Here in the U.S., it is almost impossible to build new buildings in major cities. Right now, there is, for the overall office inventory in major cities, there is only about 1% of the inventory under construction to be added in new product. So for every 100 office buildings in a city like New York, there's maybe one new building under construction. That is the lowest volume of construction activity in recorded history, and it's playing a key role in shaping the markets today. So as an example, in New York, you have, a, you have a, a, a key factor is there's no land available for development. If you were to walk outside of this hotel within a mile, you would be hard pressed to find a single site where you could build a significant office building. You'd have to go a few miles south to where the China Center is, is headquartered at the Trade Center site, and that's a result only of the 9-11 tragedy, or you'd have to go a few miles west to the rail yards, which could be the next pioneering location in Manhattan. But in terms of city center, which you think about as midtown Manhattan, there's almost no land available. And that characteristic is the same in Washington, Boston, uh, downtown San Francisco, the west side of LA, all the key markets where we do business. So lack of available land, other key variables, very little financing, if any, available for development right now. We all suffered through the financial crisis in 2008 and 2009, and it hit commercial real estate as violently as any investing sector. 2010, the financing markets finally started to recover. You saw the recovery of the securitization market, which for real estate debt was really the key driver for the last 20 years. You saw the CMBS market just start to recover. And then in 2011, unfortunately, our politicians uh, got, got caught up in the debt ceiling fiasco, and in the summer of 2011, the debt markets fell apart again. And so today, you're right back to where you were at the end of 2009, where it is extremely difficult to find commercially real estate, and commercially reasonable real estate loans. And nowhere is this more the case than for speculative development, because development is the highest risk enterprise, real estate enterprise that one could engage in. So with no land, no financing, it's likely that this very, very low volume of construction activity is going to continue for several years. So what you'll find is as the economy starts to improve, improve and as jobs start to be generated, you're going to see rents start to spike because there's no new space. 
And let's look at New York as an example. New York has actually had the best recovery, job recovery of any major city in the United States the last couple of years. We've added 35,000 jobs since the bottom of the recession. Now I look out at many of you from China and I say 35,000 jobs and I can't help but grin because it's a pretty, it's a pretty modest number. But that is twice the national average per capita for any city in the United States. So it's an important number. And with only 35,000 new jobs, New York's rents have already gone up 15%, and vacancy rates have come down about 250 basis points. So imagine what's going to happen to rents when job creation really starts to pick up. So that's a, a, a key variable. And it's particularly interesting now because since the summer, the real estate investment markets have been hurt dramatically. Prices have fallen for office buildings about 10 to 15% in the last couple of months. Whereas you might have 50 people showing, off, showing up at an auction for an office building six months ago, you might have five. So it's actually a, a very interesting time to hunt for bargains in terms of buying high quality commercial real estate. When you compound the, the, the weakness in the investment market with the likely uptick in rents that is coming. So again, it is a very different dynamic than in China. In China, I think of the real estate business as more of a manufacturing business. It's a pure development business, at least the way we do it. Whereas in the US, it's much more of an acquisitions and investing business. I get asked a lot, so Rob, if you had a dollar, would you invest it in US real estate or would you invest it in real estate in China or somewhere else in the world? And the fact of the matter is I'm happy not to have to make that decision because as a responsible investor, you want to be diversified. And for us, the key to our business is success.